Dear colleagues, in this short video lecture we present the execution of ultrasound guided aspiration including the preparation of cytological smear. We demonstrate the different kinds of ultrasound guided aspirations and the washout technique. We encourage the student to review the video if someone is not evident. So what preparations are needed to prepare a smear? In this table I enlisted the necessary supplies. We can work without using a 20 ml syringe and 20 ml biopsy pistols. On the other hand, by using these larger caliber accessories we can save on the number of punctures in larger cysts. I don't think thicker needles play a role in thyroid sampling. The only lesion is the extremely rare renal thyroiditis where we might benefit from this. Some colleagues prefer even thinner needles in S27G ones. Be aware, larger the G number, thinner the needle and conversely, smaller the G number, thicker the needle. There are two kinds of stainings. In the first and clearly preferred one, the specimen on the smear is dried with alcohol. It may be methanol, or absolute ethyl alcohol or propyl alcohol. We should start the fixation as soon as possible because the thin smear starts drying within seconds and air dried smears can cause artifacts which can be very similar to nuclear inclusions. The latter is the most important cytological characteristics of papillary cancer. Some cytopathologists prefer air dried smears if requested by the cytopathologist, the smear is allowed to dry at room temperature. I think that the washout technique is an essential part of thyroid aspiration cytology. Therefore, necessities should include normal saline. So let's see whether all necessities are available. Biopsy pistol with the corresponding syringe the larger 20 ml caliber pistol and the corresponding syringe, needles, slides, cuvette filled with alcohol and the normal saline. The first and very important role is the signing of the slide. For safety I suggest that this be done by the person who is also sampling. Anyway, I don't think that ultrasound guided aspiration requires the involvement of another person. This is a one man show or a one woman show. Now I put on my gloves, which seems to be the most time consuming phase. It is important to insert the correct side of the syringe into the pistol. This will ensure that the needle fits into the ultrasound probe during aspiration. Now we insert the appropriate needle to the syringe. We have done the sampling and now we are preparing the smear. We spread the specimen onto the slide and smear with the use of another slide. Thereafter we place the prepared smear into alcohol for fixation. The first technique of ultrasound guided aspiration is the perpendicular one. The nodule is positioned in the middle of the screen, while the needle is positioned central, just over the nodule. We aspirated 1.5 ml yellow fluid. Now we prepare the smear. I personally prefer the perpendicular sampling over the parallel technique. The former provides the shortest possible route, an advantage which cannot be overjudged. Shorter the route, less the chance of contamination with tissue fragments. Although we tried to get the material from the nodule into the needle by suction, we have no guarantee that the tissue in front of the lesion has entered the needle by the time we reach the nodule. This can lead to false result 
if the nodule is located deeper in the thyroid gland. On the other hand, the needle may become blocked by the time you reach the nodule during the puncture. The other advantage of perpendicular sticking is that it can be performed in all lesions irrespectively of their location. There is a clear disadvantage of perpendicular technique. We cannot follow the way of the needle from the skin toward the targeted nodule. We need to recognize when the tip of the needle crosses the ultrasound wave. So, perpendicular sampling requires more skill and practice compared with parallel technique. Let's see the execution of the other, the parallel technique. First, we place the probe on the neck of the patient and search for the adequate position for aspiration. Now we place the needle in the middle of the one end of the long axis of the probe. During the aspiration, the needle advances along the long axis of the transducer. When the tip of the needle is in the right position, we perform the aspiration. The procedure is followed by the preparation of the smear. The obvious advantage of parallel technique is the better visualization. We can control the entire route of the needle from the skin toward the targeted nodule. On the other hand, this route is much longer compared to perpendicular technique. Therefore, the sample gained by parallel aspiration is more likely contaminated and the chance of clotting the needle is higher than by perpendicular aspiration. Moreover, not all lesions can be reached by a parallel way. The third technique was introduced in the everyday practice because thyroid finding respiration frequently results in non-diagnostic puncture. This failure is in great part caused by the very good vascularity of the organ. And this is evident that fluid can be much easily aspirated than solid particles. The essence of this technique is the capillary principle. Negative pressure can be achieved even without aspiration. The self-evident advantage over aspiration is the less contamination with blood. Similarly, one of the disadvantages of non-aspiration technique is also obvious. The amount of material gained from the targeted nodule is also smaller, not infrequently insufficient. There is another, less obvious disadvantage of non-aspiration. On the route of the needle towards the targeted organ, tissue fragments inevitably get into the needle. The ratio of material entering the needle on the way to material from the target area is higher if do not apply aspiration when reaching the target. Nevertheless, this technique should be considered in all cases when we gain bloody material on aspiration and should be performed if the FNA was non-diagnostic due to excess blood. Let's see how to perform non-aspiration sampling. First, we search for the adequate position. Thereafter, insert a needle. When you have reached the nodule, move the needle in it several times, also helping to get as much material from the nodule as possible into the needle. Then, we put the needle into a syringe and perform the usual phases of smear preparation. The next topic is the washout technique. This is performed after a usual aspiration or non-aspiration sampling. After preparing the smear, we wash out the material within the needle twice, once when one milliliter of saline is drawn through the needle, second when this one milliliter of saline is injected through the needle into the appropriate blood collection tube. So, let's see how to perform it. To spare time, we remove the cap from the tube. Then, we perform a usual sampling. In this patient, aspirational cytology.
be prepared now the smear. Thereafter, we draw one milliliter saline through the needle into the syringe. Then this one milliliter fluid is injected through the needle into the tube. Finally, I raise the attention to the very essence of aspiration cytology. We need to perform two times four phases in the correct order. For a beginner, it's like learning to ride a bike. Once knowledge needs to be fixed, then it cannot be forgotten. During the phase of aspiration, these phases are sticking, sucking, releasing and removing. The crucial point is that we must release before removing. If we remove the needle from the patient before releasing, then the material gets into the syringe. Just then, when we finished with the aspiration, comes the second crucial point. We must remove the needle and only after that suck the needle. In the reverse order, the specimen gets into the syringe, which means that we lose it. So, let's see our final short video. First, with normal speed. Now I repeat the video in slow motion. Thank you very much for your attention.